All right, well, good morning again. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. This week has been a little bit of a challenging week for me. Is this thing on? No, no. That's it. Check it out. Here it is. It's on. All right. Jim, you can hear me now, and everyone will stay awake this time. So, it's been a challenging week this week. I had a lot, a lot of hours logged in at, at work today, and, or this week, and I had a lady on vacation, two people on vacation, but, <clears throat> so I got, we do, I do a Wednesday night Bible study, and, and uh, so I'm studying for that, and then uh, my vacation Bible school has been going on for the last three weeks in different locations, different churches, and the county-wide vacation Bible school was, my Thursday was to, to teach, the, from, I got four different groups, you got the youngest ones, you got the next ones up, the next ones up, and then you got the older so I was studying that for Thursday, and then, uh, so I thought, well, all this work going on, I said, I'll have Saturday to study this, and then and other things come up, God has other plans for you, don't, don't procrastinate if you're not, <laughs> if you don't have, feel like that's, got, that's God's will, so I don't know that I was procrastinating, but uh, the Lord provided, I was studying for the, since Lance is going to be on vacation, so I had to study a little bit for the lesson today for their Sunday school, and I uh, I want to move forward in our ABCs. I started last week. This is my first series. And uh, last week I was after Vacation Bible School. We were talking about the ABCs of your Christianity. How do you become saved, right? We talked about that first. That's in Romans, the Roman road. You admit, you believe, you confess, right? You, that's your salvation. That's, that's extremely important. I'm not trying to take away from that. I'm moving forward. But a lot of Christians as we get older... We say, okay, now what? We look at our lives and say, okay, you see it, you see it in a lot of different Christians, and I think some of them are very strong Christians. There are Christians that can read the scripture, quote the scripture, that they don't come to church. They, there's, there are people that say, well, I'm, I'm satisfied, I'm saved, I don't need to come to church. COVID had a lot to do with that. I think a lot of people left the church when COVID hit. It separated us. And there is a lot, there's a lot to do with that. We need to be together. There's their strength in numbers. We need to be edifying one another. But I want to start out, I want to, before I just talk too long here, this might be the quickest sermon or the longest sermon, I'm going to start talking too long. So let's turn with me in uh, Romans chapter 14. We're going to read just uh, verses uh, 1. I'm going to turn to the book here. Romans chapter 14. Turn to uh, chapter 14, 1 through 4. Or 1 through 9, I can't talk. It says, him that is weak in the faith, receive he ye, but not to the doubtful di disputation. Yeah, disputation. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not, and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. <laughs> who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord, both of the dead and the living. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, if you will. Dear kind, gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for those that are made out here this Lord's day. We pray for the word, Lord. We pray that it instills it in our hearts. We know that you are an everlasting uh, God. We have an everlasting life, one way or the other. We are either in the kingdom of light or in the kingdom of darkness, Lord. We pray that uh, those who know you not come to know you, Lord, and that salvation is through you and you are the way, you are the only way, Jesus. 
Thank you for those that are beat, that are here. Those that have asked an interest in repairs are those that are sick and afflicted. Those that have gone through surgery, Lord. We know that you are the great healer, the comforter. We know that you can do all things, Lord. But most of all, Lord, that we pray for those people around, those people who are sick. Pray that you comfort them. Give them an everlasting comfort so they can have an everlasting peace, Lord. Watch over us today, Lord. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And amen. Yeah. I chose this scripture. Well, when I'm going through Romans, if you were to study through Romans, you'll find uh, the first five, the last five chapters of, of, uh, of Romans is teaching Christians how to apply their lives. All five of the last, the all last five chapters. Chapter 12, if you go back and you study, it's talking about the functioning in the body, how we function. Chapter 13, he goes through the functioning in society, how we as Christians, as after you have salvation, as we move forward, functioning in society. And here in chapter 14, it's talking about how we function in the body of Christ. As we as Christians, how we deal with one another. Over and over he says, well, some people, some people believe the Sabbath is on Saturday. Some believe it's on Sunday. Don't judge one another on that. Some people don't want to eat this. I don't think you should eat this. And some people say you should eat this. It's okay. It's okay. So we talked about last week, where I was reminding you guys about Roman, the Roman road. ABCs, right, of salvation. You got to admit, believe, and confess. So... Hopefully, see how however I'm going to say. Now we're talking about our calling. The ABCs of our calling. Now what? Now you're saved. You're Christian. You, you, you have a good foundation. You believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So now what? What do you want? Are you ready to count the cost? Are you ready to move forward in your life? So A was what? You guys remember what we were talking about A? Availability. Kind of important. Now are you available for Christ? If you weren't available, it's kind of hard to move forward. Some people can't have, find the time for God. Now, see how guess is. Guess, get, give me a B. That's not a B. It's not like I said, give me a B. No. Give me a, a B. Not a cheerleading. Up. Give me a B. No. I don't want the B. No. Okay. What, what's, what do you think B stands for? What is it? Belief. Well, I, I, I believe is a good one. A lot of people think that would be the believe again. Because belief continually, you've got to continue believing, right? But if you admit, believe, and confess is, that, is your salvation, which is extremely important in our salvation, it's extremely important in our moving forward, too. But what else could it be besides belief? You ever think of what else? It, what? Not believing. You already believe. You believe that Jesus Christ yes. is... What? Yes. Best. You, yeah. Well, Christ is our best. That's a B. He's right. Being. That's a good one. Being. Being. Part of a being. That's right. Well, I'm going to... I'll see if this thing works for me. Probably won't. No, it does. I'm going to go with belonging. Very close. Belonging. To move forward in your Christian life, we got to realize we belong somewhere, don't we? I, I like to think that sometimes, some people say, well, this, this is not my home, is it? <laughs> so we got to realize, man, we belong somewhere else. But you belong here, too. If you're sitting in the pew, you belong here. You belong in the body of Christ. So, Let's read here Romans. We'll still stick here with Romans. Move back to Romans chapter 8. We'll read a little bit. And in our belongings, anytime you were I was trying to figure out what, like in society, for, for the definition of, de, of to just to define belonging, it means to, to know and to be loved is what we look for in belonging. We will all want to know that we are loved, don't we? We all want to be part of something. You look at that and you say, well, is that not true in our family? Don't you ever, you don't want to be the black sheep in family, do we? Well, some people might want to be, but most of the time you want to belong in the family. You want to belong to a church. Sometimes when you have no father in the house or there's no family involved, that's where you get gangs getting more and more involved. In the big cities, you see gangs getting involved, right? 
tribes. <laughs> you see, that you belong to a tribe. The tribe of Judah, they belong. They knew their lineage. And so you see the commercials all the time. Send in your DNA and find out where you belong. Your lineage. You know, I don't know where I'd be, but I, who knows? But we need a belonging. And I was looking at that. And in society, and psychologists think belonging, there's three main characteristics of belonging. It says security, stability, and health. It's all key parts of having a belonging feeling. I think that still can move right over to our Christianity, doesn't it? To know that we belong to Christ, we belong to God, can help us move forward in our ministry. I want to read here uh, Romans chapter 8. I want to read uh, verse 14 through 17. Romans 8, 14 through 17. Well, hopefully I say it right. Here we go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Make sure you understand you are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to the fear, to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If so, be that we suffer with him. Uh-oh, here comes the cause. If so, if all this is true, and you have salvation, and you belong to Christ, if so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be glorified together. There is a better home waiting, brothers and sisters. There is a better home waiting for us. Amen. We should know that. That's security. We have that security in Christ. We have the stability, knowing that He loves us. For God so loved the world, right? He gave His only begotten. He loves you first. We have that security. Health, man, the fruits. God's grace is so sufficient. I want mercy and I want grace. When we have that, we see that fruit that they can be within us. You see the fruits of other people. So you see the love shared by others. So, did I get them all? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. So, I think the Bible has a lot to say about our belonging. Our belonging as Christ followers. We are Christians. We are Christ followers, right? We are supposed to be mimicking Christ. So, a couple things, a few things I want to mention here. As we are Christ followers, we can jump in there if you want to follow along with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. I think there's a few things we need to know. I am not my own. I am not my own. You know, I might look like, don't you have free will, love? Don't you, can't you do whatever you want? I sure can. I have free will. God has given me that ability. But not whenever I am a follower of Christ. It says there in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, says, What know ye not? I like it. What? It's a question mark. What? <laughs> know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you think that body is yours? The Holy Spirit dwells in you. Once you have salvation and the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you've been baptized. The Holy Spirit dwells within you. What? Know ye not that the body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Buddy, it was a heavy price, too. You are bought and paid for. Have you ever been the boss of a company or boss of somebody, boss of your children? You give them a, you give them a, 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 a salary, or you give them a, an allowance, or you give them something, I want what I paid for. <laughs> Don't you? you know, yeah. Do you realize you were bought with the price? A very, it was a blood sacrifice. 
his very own son. For ye are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So once you have accepted salvation, you have accepted Christ, you have an eternal life, man, you are not your own. You are Christ. Second part, turn to 1 Corinthians 3.23, just one easy verse. I belong to Christ, and Christ belongs to God. It says, and ye are Christ, and Christ is God's. Nice and simple. You are either, you have one way or the other, that's that salvation message again. You're either in the kingdom of darkness, or you're in the kingdom of light. Once you are in the kingdom of light, which is Jesus Christ, you're his. You belong to Christ. That's a good thing. <laughs> Amen, right? That's, right? That's a good thing. You belong to Christ. Thirdly, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. You know how we were redeemed? You know, you know how you were redeemed? By blood. By blood. You were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You were paid for by crimson currency. Does that make sense? The blood of Jesus. And you have salvation. I am purchased and paid for. For your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. I'm going to go over this again. What does that mean? Without blemish and without spot. It means two things. He was born perfect. He was born perfect and he lived his life without spot. He was spotless. Sinless. No man could even, no man other than Christ can take on those, those attributes. He had the Father of God in him. And lastly, John 10, 27, and 30, I am safe and secure. You guys remember when we were all kids? When we were children and you, you, sat, in your, you sat on your dad's lap or you, you had that security of your grandma or whatever. You liked to go into your grandma's house and sit with her. Or you had that security, that bondage, your protection. We were protected by Christ. Isn't that the best news ever, too? We are secure. We have a heavenly Father, Abba Father, right? John 10, 27 through 30 says, My sheep hear my voice. Do you hear his voice calling? That was a vacation Bible school. I had all these little kids laying around. It was uh, it was the parable of the lost sheep. And he left the 99 for the one. I'm the one. A lot of us like to think, well, I'm the 99. I guess I can do without Christ for a little bit. Let's go, go get that one and bring it back in so he can be with me. God, no, I'm the one. We like we like thinking we're the 99, man. I'm over there saying bye-bye, being lost in the in the open field. I don't like a bad joke, but I can, it's a, it, it, you know, with the little kids, you, you think about it and you teach more of your, yourself sometimes. You look at that and say, man, I, that's me. The lost coin comes right after that. Who is the lost coin? That's me. I have value. You might not see the value, but I have value. <laughs> we all have value. You are valuable. The Holy Spirit is out there sweeping the dirt, looking for you. And then you got the, 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 the lost son comes right after that. You're the lost son. You're the one out there wasting your life away until you come to know Christ. It says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You know, in the, just to get another understanding of that sheep and the shepherd, when the shepherd had to come in, they had like a gathering. I don't know how to exactly explain it, but all, they would, all the sheep would go in. Oh, not just your sheep, the other shepherd's sheep, the other shepherd's sheep, the other shepherd's sheep. They'd all bring them into one big area. 
And they'd sleep by that little opening so that it would protect us. Nothing could come out. But when you called out, you called out, that shepherd would call out whatever the, you know, whatever, whatever their calling is. Don't make me make a sheep noise. I don't want to do that again. But he would call out and only his sheep would come out of that fence. Would come out of the fold. Does that make sense? And all those sheep out there, but only the shepherd's sheep heard his voice. Only his sheep would come to him. Do you know, do you hear the voice of the Lord call? That's what he's trying to tell you. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, uh, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. And I, and I and my Father are one. Isn't that the best news, man? We are secure. We are secure. Safe and secure. So, how do we use this practically? I was reading here in Romans, but you know, how do, how do we belong in Christ? How do we remind ourselves that you belong in Christ? You get up every day, just go on your day to day, do you start the day out right? Do you study the scripture? How to remind ourselves? We need to remind ourselves every day, don't we? Or, no, or else we'll trip ourselves up. I don't need you to trip me up. I can trip myself up. I can dig my own pit. You don't need to dig my pit. I'm good. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 <coughs> says we need to live a healing life. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says and the very God of peace Sanctify you wholly, and I pray your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to live a yielding life. What does that mean? Well, there's talking about that your whole sanctify you wholly. For I am holy, right? Be ye holy, for I am holy, Christ says. Be you holy. Sanctify yourself. Set yourself apart. Be holy. And I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body. Wait a minute. How am I supposed to have all three? Now I can see spiritually. That's where my joy comes from. I have joy in the Lord, right? That's spiritual. Physical, that's pleasure. What does that mean? You mean I can't have pleasure? Well, yeah, but at the same sense, deny yourself. Don't say, well, God made me that I have to do whatever I want. Yes, you can. But it also says you to deny thyself. Our soul, what does that mean by our soul? It means that's our happiness. Can we be happy? Well, sure to be happy. We should be happy. But there are limitations. We are His. We need to be listening to Him, listening to the Word. We need to deny some of the pleasures of this world. But when it when it puts stumbling blocks into the congregation or the people around us, that means you shouldn't be uh, partaking of it. it. Says Jesus invites you also, right? Ah, that's great news. Jesus invites you. He, you know, we live. We need to be living a yielded life. A yielding life, but we should know that Jesus invites you. Isaiah 55 1 says, Come, all you who are thirsty. I'm thirsty. <laughs> Come, all you who are thirsty. If you're satisfied with salvation, I understand. Salvation is important, it's the most important thing. But are you willing to serve? That's what we're trying to get to here. You have a calling. We are all called to minister, either through our lives, through our work, through our family, through, our, through wherever we are all called. But there are steps we need to be taking to move forward into that calling. 
I was thinking that, that no shirt, no shoes, no service, right? You ever see, back in the day, I don't know, I hadn't seen a sign like that for a long time, but back when we were in the, we used to take vacations when I was a real little kid to uh, Myrtle Beach all the time, and all the little mom and pop stores, they all had these signs, because we would all come in with no shirt, no shoes. There was usually no money, because we're kids, but uh, they all said the same thing, no shoes, no shirt, no service. Well, I, I submit to you what we're talking about. No availability, no belonging, no servant. How can you be a servant if you don't want to belong in the house of the Lord? If you don't want to belong to Him, Jesus Christ, how can you be a servant of Christ? We're all okay when it says, uh, you know, we have the Lord and Savior. We talked about that the other day. That capital S, you know, when you're reading through the scripture and you see a big S there for Savior, He's our Lord and Savior. We're good with that part. I'm happy to have a Savior. Man, that's great news. I'm saved. So deeply saved. Forever saved. I have salvation through Jesus Christ. Savior. I'm wonderful with the Savior. Lord, wait a minute. You mean you have to be my master? You mean I have to submit to you? You want, you, wait, you want me to submit to your will too? Yes. It's Lord and Savior. Is he your Lord and Savior? We need to move forward into that part. Are you listening to the word of God? Are you ready to step forward and move into your ministry? Into the calling that you belong into? Rest assured, you do belong into it. Are you willing to submit Dave, that cough drop that you didn't give me, that my wife gave me, lasted just perfect amount of time. <laughs> I pray you're all moving forward in, in the scripture and in your Bible studies. Don't, don't come here on just Sundays and say, that's my service. We all get tired. There are people that, that, that come to church for so many years in their lives and then finally say, that's enough. It's not enough. If God, God, God recommends or expects your reasonable service. When, I, when, I, when we're done with this, we say, as children and as adults, we say, when I'm done with this life, I pray when I stand there before the throne, we say, well done, my good and faithful servant. I want to be a servant. Recognize, then you have a calling. We have we have a job to do. It doesn't it doesn't save you. I'm gonna say, well, if I do the job, then I get saved. No, it doesn't work like that. Your salvation is a gift. We have a great gift. But after that, we have salvation. You are bought and paid for. I want to be able to say, job well done when I get there. I did the best of my abilities. You have a song, Frank. You have a if you don't know the Lord, come. Come to know Him. Accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Get to work. Isn't that great news? Come to know Him. Let me have it.